Good morning guys. It is Saturday morning and to be completely frank it's pretty dang early for a Saturday morning but come on down and I'll show you what I'm up to. I was planning on applying the last coat of paint here in the saloon yesterday afternoon but when I got to the boat it turned out that my little heater had switched off for some reason and it was way too cold in here to start painting. I really want to finish putting on that last coat of paint this weekend. So what I'll do is I'll apply that last coat of paint now and then I'll just go spend a few hours with Jökul and then when I get back to the boat a little later on in the day that last coat of paint will have dried enough that I won't have to worry about kicking up dust and that ruining the last coat of paint. And all of that means I won't have to change my plans for this weekend and all it required me to do was just to get up a little bit early this morning. Well. 4 a.m. early, but who's counting? The temperature is hovering just around freezing outside and I want to make absolutely sure that the surfaces here inside of the boat are warm enough for me to start painting them because it would really suck to mess up that last coat of paint because that would mean having to sand it all off again and then apply it again and I don't want to do that. So I want to make sure that the surfaces in here are warm enough and I could do that using something like this cheap infrared thermometer. 20 degrees Celsius, awesome. But being somewhat fond of gadgets, I thought it'd be more fun to use my little infrared camera here. So this will also reveal any tiny cold spots. So this is better than the uh, infrared thermometer, but in no way required, of course. The coldest temperature I found on the surfaces here inside of the boat was 13 degrees Celsius, which I think is perfectly okay. So it looks like I'm ready to start painting. But before I do that, I've got one tiny little tip I want to share with you. I use these little lights to light the videos I shoot for you guys, but they're also great for lighting up a surface when you need to apply that last coat of paint, where you want to make absolutely sure that you've got no dry spots or even spots that you've completely missed. These lights are great because they're square and they've got almost no bezel on them and that means you can push them up really close to the surface that you're painting on and then turn them on. And having that light coming from the side like that, that's going to show up any and all mistakes you've made. On these particular lights you can either use a rechargeable Sony NPF battery, which these you can get on eBay for next to nothing, or you can use just regular AA batteries. If you're going to be painting a surface where you care a lot about the finish, I highly recommend you pick up something like this or maybe even this exact model here because they're not all that expensive and they're a huge help. Well, I better get busy painting, but I'll be right back. Hi guys, it's about three and a half hours later now and I've spent that time taking your cool for a long walk and also editing the first three minutes of this video. When shooting these videos where I only have about a day and a half to put something together, it can at times feel a little bit like a struggle to put some content together that's also worth watching, while at the same time getting stuff done aboard the boat. I know this might sound a little bit silly, but just knowing that I've got those first three minutes of this video sorted is very comforting. But it, let's head down below and see how that final coat of paint turned out. I don't know what kind of lubricant got used on this hatch here, but whenever it's cold, it's kind of a struggle to open it. So I'll have to clean it at some point. And that is why you never see me closing more than the very last bit of that hatch on video. But uh, yeah, looking at that last coat of paint, it looks like it turned out okay. I've just gone over all of the areas that I've painted and they're not 100% perfect, but they're okay. Like for instance, over here, here, there's a grain of dust stuck in the paint, but yeah, that's okay. To quote a much bigger channel here on YouTube that I know quite a few of you guys also enjoy, it's certainly good enough for the girls I go out with. Eh? But enough about all of that boring paint stuff, let's get back to something interesting, which of course for right now means the aft cabin. My overall goals for this weekend was to get that paint sorted, but that's done so we don't have to worry about that anymore. But I also want to get started on this area here. At least I want to clean up all of the wiring in there and maybe start taking it apart, but we'll see. 
and here it should look more or less like it did in the ending of the last video. I went ahead and cleaned up some of the wiring in here while the video was rendering, but other than that, it's the same as in the last video. So far I've removed these wires and most of them weren't in use. What I'll do is I'll label all of the wiring you just saw that's actually connected to something and then I'll pull it in here and just store it in here until I start rewiring the boat in well, maybe two or three weeks. This is going to be very simple. It's just a matter of picking a random breaker, let's say mast headlight, and then just tracing that wire to make sure that it doesn't go to the bus, but it's actually connected to something. Or at least I hope it is. So we'll just pull this and put a label on it. And by label, I don't mean one of those fancy heat shrink labels, just a bit of masking tape. I've gotten rid of the last wire that was connected to the old distribution panel, and this is just all the connections that went to the positive bus. So now I can get rid of this. These are all the wires that were connected up to the old distribution panel, and I am going to replace all of the wiring throughout the boat. So I could in theory just rip these out and just throw them away, but I think it's well worth it to spend the time it takes to label these wires, just in case I run into some kind of mysterious riddle later on, where it might be useful to know that, well, this used to be connected up to the breaker named Fridge. This is where having each of the wires individually labeled one of those heat shrink labels might have been nice, because look at all these blue wires here. They're all just connected up to the negative bus over here, but I have no idea what these are used for. For now, I'll just remove them and store them with the other wires. Things are starting to shape up in here. Let's see if I can go ahead and remove the brain box for the autopilot. Very interesting, and look at that, a small ATO ATC fuse. It's certainly nice knowing that that's there in case this all of this suddenly stops working. This brown wire here turns into this red wire here, and this went to the breaker named autopilot clutch. That's very handy to know. Whoops. <laughs> well, I don't need that. I've gone ahead and documented this with a photo just so that I know how these are all hooked up. And I think I'm gonna take it one step further and actually put heat shrink labels on all of these because I do wanna reuse this autopilot because these are ridiculously expensive. Ah, uh, don't. If only I had ordered some different sizes of heat shrink too. I just ordered the one just to test it out and this is not big enough. Wop, wop, wop. Well, not as neat, but it'll do. Yeah, see, now we're starting to get somewhere. All that's basically left in here now is the negative bus, the positive bus, and the power for the SSB. These were all connected to the negative bus, and these were all connected to the positive bus. I'd like to trace these to see which two of these goes to the battery, or, well, there might be more than two going to the battery. It is an older boat after all. And this is where things might get slightly less comfortable because all of that wiring exits out through the locker next to the chart table out underneath the cabin sole, underneath here. But don't take my word for it. Take a look for yourself. See? Joy! See all of that wiring in there? That's what's coming out of the bottom of that locker. I think, I think now might be a good time to introduce a new segment into my videos called How to Swear in Danish. For helvede i satan der was. I mean, why would you want to put something like that way back in there when you can't get to it? Well, there's no need to get super upset about it because it's basically just a bit of an odd decision made by the yard. Well, another odd decision I might add, but uh, luckily seems like it can be fixed with a saw. Ah, see now that is good access. I've always been a pretty lucky guy and I don't think that's gonna change now. Look at this. This looks to me, for all the world, like a fuel line with some diesel in it. 
And why is that good news? Well, because I need to hook up a fuel line for the day tank for the reflex stove. And well, I'm not gonna reuse that old fuel line, but just having that there is gonna make it a lot easier because there's bound to be a fitting out on the tank that I can maybe reuse. Aha, see that's the first of the cables from the uh, negative bus. Okay, so it looks like this goes forward. Okay, and this red one from the positive bus goes towards the aft of the boat. So I'm guessing this one is hooked up to the battery. I found all of the larger gauges of wire that were connected up to the negative and the positive bus, but you know what? I'm gonna resume this once it's light out. That's gonna make it a lot easier. Instead, the very last thing I'm gonna do today is to take this apart, at least partially. Oh, and if you're wondering about the box up there, that's my Christmas gift for Yerkul. It's one of those subscription things where a box shows up once a month with a bunch of treats and toys in it. And there we go. Ta-da! Wow, that freed up quite a lot of space. Well guys, I'm gonna head back to Yerkul and take him for his evening walk, but uh, I'll see you guys here back aboard Athena bright and early tomorrow morning. Good morning guys. It is Sunday morning and it looks like it's gonna be a beautiful day. It's about three degrees Celsius and it looks like we're gonna get a little bit of sun today. The very first thing I was planning on doing today was to figure out what those larger gauge wires from the negative and the positive bus are connected to. But then when leaving the boat yesterday, I discovered something. Yesterday, I mentioned that this hatch here has always been a little bit stucky when it's cold. But then yesterday, I wasn't able to open the hatch any further than this. And I think I know why. While rummaging around with the wiring yesterday, I must have pulled on something that's connected to one of those instruments. And I think that's what's keeping the hatch from opening all the way. And it would certainly be nice to be able to enter the boat in a slightly more normal fashion than this. Especially when you take the pit of wiring into account that's right underneath the companionway. I've tried pushing up on the wires that go up to those instruments, but that doesn't do anything. So I think I'll have to take apart that part up there. And also exiting the boat, it's just a tiny bit awkward. I've unscrewed the part here and the good news is that it's definitely the wiring keeping the hatch from going all the way forward. The annoying news is that this looks like some kind of proprietary nut or bolt. I don't know, these might be super common in other parts of the world, but it's certainly not something that I have in my toolbox. I think the only other thing I can really do is just to try and pull out the hatch and see if I can get to the wiring that way. Yep, it's right in there. I have no idea how I'm gonna keep that from getting caught on the hatch. I've just shoved the wires around a bit in there. Let's see if that'll work. But while I have the hatch off, I might as well clean that track. This is mineral spirits. Let's see if that will loosen up that grease. Mmm, that seems very effective. For a quick comparison, this is what the track looks like before cleaning it. As you can see, it's pretty grimy. And this is what it looks like after having cleaned it. Let's give this a go. I think I've gotten that wiring pushed out of the way. Oh, that slides so much easier now. I wouldn't say doing that was a waste of time because it's certainly nice to be able to come down below without being a part-time contortionist. And it's also nice that the hatch now slides a little bit more easily, but that wasn't what I was planning on doing this morning. Let's get back to tracing those wires. And to be able to do that, I think I need to remove the cover for the engine compartment. This thing is pretty bulky and heavy and it would certainly be nice to see if I can come up with a better solution at some point. And this is one of the many reasons I fell in love with Athena, her almost brand new engine. 
The engine is beautiful, but on each side of the engine, and this is the starboard side, there's a bit of a wiring situation going on. And this is over on the port side. Oh joy. I think a good first step to cleaning up this area over here would be to get rid of this charger here. Of course, this isn't in use anymore. It looks like the AC side of this charger is connected to this doohickey here. And generally aboard this boat here, there's absolutely no separation between AC and DC wiring. It's all just lumped together. So to get this disconnected from the battery, I need to trace this, which goes here and, oh, <laughs> look at that, a butt connector. Well, which then goes to here and then disappears behind all of this. So maybe if I just try yanking on this, aha, uh -huh. that's the wire. So now I can just go ahead and remove that old charger. Ta-da! Dang it, I got sidetracked again. Like I mentioned last week, it's just so awfully satisfying to clean up a mess like that, that I totally forgot about that wire I was supposed to trace. But I think I've actually already found it. Just looking at the gauge of this wire, I think it's this one, but let's take a closer look. Okay, I've traced it this far now, and this goes... Ah, oh, that's interesting. This is connected directly to the battery. I don't mean directly to the battery, I mean directly to the battery selector in there. Because of course, before I started pulling any of these wires through, I just checked them with my multimeter to make sure that they weren't connected directly to the battery. Ah, here we go. One less wire to worry about. And as you can hopefully see, this goes down there and then connects up to the battery selector. You know that old saying, time flies when you're having fun? Well, time also flies when you have a deadline on a video. I haven't done a lot of editing on this video yet and I need to get started doing that pretty dang soon. But before I end this video, there are a couple of things I want to mention. First off, in a few days, maybe on Wednesday, I'll upload a new video. But don't get too excited. It's just a very short three minute channel introduction. I know a lot of you guys have been around for a really long time and I appreciate that very much. But that video isn't really geared towards you. It's more geared towards newcomers to the channel. So just don't get too excited. The second and final thing I wanna mention before ending this video is the fact that there was more stuff I wanted to include in this video. But I got sidetracked and people stopped by the boat and long story short, I've just run out of time. But next week, we'll take a look at what's inside of this exciting looking box. And we'll also take a quick peek at two different editions of this awesome book. But I better get busy editing, guys. So yeah, that is going to be it for this video. See you. Jukul and I hope you've enjoyed this video. For more videos like it, click subscribe. Please consider leaving a comment and a thumbs up. It really helps me a lot and I appreciate your support very much. If you're new to the channel, please check out the introduction playlist. If you want to watch every single video I've ever published, check out the playlist named All Videos. It contains every single video listed in chronological order. Yeah, do you got do you got Oh, do you got Oh, do you got Yeah, let's go.